Hello learners of class 12. Welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Learners, we are doing the eighth lesson from your textbook Flamingo. The title of the lesson is Going Places. We have done the first part. We have read and understood the story, appreciated the story and reflected on the story. Now, in part 2, in this part, we will do the vocabulary and some grammar that is noticing form, present participle using ing and writing if a time permits. So, before we move on to understand what we will be doing that is uh, vocabulary, to, we will we'll, we'll revisit the text to understand the vocabulary and use it in real life purposes, then uh, do some grammar noticing form, then writing. Learners to do these activities of vocabulary, some uh, grammar and writing uh, with you or me, Meganathan from the Department of Education Languages and Kriti uh, from the same department. Hello learners and thank you sir for having me here. I am looking forward to do the second part of the chapter going places with very you. Very good, very good. Okay. Uh, uh, Kriti, let us let's do something. Yes, uh, let us recall the story, re kind of recapsulating the story, uh, going places. So, quickly uh, let us recall the story. Come sure, on. sir. Yeah. So, going places is a story about Sophie who is a teenage girl and she dreams a lot and like we have seen she is creating a scenario where she has met Danny Cassie, a famous soccer player. So, they are at the beginning of the story, uh, Sophie and her friend Jancy are coming from school and they are going to their ho houses. And uh, her house is also described uh, in such a way that it looks untidy and some unfinished work is there in the house. Uh, yes, poor household. Poor household like unwashed utensils and uh, there are five members in total in Sophie's family that is Sophie herself, her younger brother Derek, her elder brother uh, Jeff, her father and her mother. And uh, she is much closer to Jeff and uh, she talks about him, uh, about her dream and about the fantasy she has about. She believes it is true. Yes, she believes it is true. She creates uh, a kind of a scenario where she tells Jeff that she has met Danny Cassie at the arcade and uh, at the beginning he does not believe uh, Sophie and he is shocked. And, uh, but afterwards like how Sophie creates the whole story uh, of meeting Danny Cassie, Jeff agrees that okay you have met Danny Cassie and uh, he tells her father and also her friend Jancy. But Jancy on the other hand uh, is someone who is. Uh, it is practical, she is practical. Who is practical and she doubts uh, Sophie that she has really met uh, Danny Cassie. And she is also, she becomes sad at the end of the story we see that she is walking uh, away from her home to a very uh, lonely place where she is present. And uh, she again fantasized the whole scenario where she met Danny Cassie apparently and uh, she, she has a lot of idealis idealism for Danny Cassie and she, uh, she is also uh, describing the character of Danny that he has green eyes, he has, uh, he has a good physique and everything about him. So, this is basically a story about two teenage girls who have contradictory personalities. One girl who is Sophie who is a daydreamer and the other girl which is uh, Jancy who is a practical girl uh, and uh, this is how all the characters are reflected in the story. Fine, fine. Well, well, well done. Uh, thank you uh, Kriti for uh, doing a recap of the story for the benefit of learners. Learners, uh, this is part 2. So, we assume that you have read it, then understood the story. So, now we will take up some of the words and usages uh, the writer uh, uses, applies to make the story interesting. Come on, uh, if you look at the uh, some of the usages, let me read out, uh, you can see it uh, as it appears. When Sophie describes her brother, she says, words had to be prized out of him like stones out of grounds. 
So, words had to be prized out of him like stones out of grounds. What does it mean? Sir, it basically means that Jeff, her brother, was such a quiet person that to make him speak, it was a difficult task. Okay, fine. And sometimes, you know, we have to give him money, then only he will speak. Yes, yes. Okay, then look at that. Keep that. We will do it. Uh, how the author uses words had to be prized out of him. Then, next one, very interesting usage. Sophie felt a tightening in her throat. When will you feel that someone puts a, a, a hand and <laughs> tighten your throat? So, when you are? When we are tensed, when we are anxious, when we are feeling and a lot of anxiety. And trouble. Yeah, mm. and trouble we feel that our throat is being tightened. Okay, okay. When, when, when Jeff tells uh, uh, their father yes, sir. that uh, Sophie had met, met. Uh, then she, she was she never expected him to tell her father. Yes, yes. Uh, sir. Their father. So so she felt like no, oh red red and redly caught. Yes. So sir. that's what choking like. Then look at the third usage. If he keeps his head on his shoulders, he could win much better. So what does it mean? He could keep his head on his shoulders. Means he should think uh, and act. Yes, sir. Shoulders generally we act. Shoulders is a muscle power. But uh, head is the Thinking. Thinking. So, the, the, the one of the uh, spectators, uh, fans of the cricket, uh, the, sorry, soccer match, says that, oh, Kasi uh, uh, is playing very well, but he should uh, think. That is what he says, if he keeps his head on his shoulders. Then look at next one. On Saturday, they made their weekly pilgrimage to the United. So, this basically means that uh, there is a custom. Uh, of people who goes to church every weekend on Sunday. So, they were so, uh, the whole family of Sophie was so into the game of soccer that it was a customary uh, ritual ritual for <laughs> them to go every weekend to uh, see the, the United. The way we, we Indians do uh, with the cricket yes, or some fi filmy, film heroes. Films basically. Uh, yes, so, sir. they made their weekly pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is a religious uh, religious kind of uh, travel to a place, yes, sir. then to pay uh, this one worship and to pay their uh, this one uh, kind of thing. So, uh, the whole family went to watch the soccer match, football on Saturday in which the United win. Who played? Uh, our uh, he, Her hero played. Danny Cassie. Uh, Danny Cassie played. So, look at the next usage. She saw him that is Danny Cassie goes past the lumbering defenders. So, he passed the uh, defenders like a ghost and hit the goals. That is what. Now, I am going to ask Kriti yes, sir. and the learners make some sentences using the usage, the phrases uh, or the in a kind of uh, it's kind of sentences he is using, you know, the writer use them in your own sentence. Look at it. I'm going to ask you the first one. Words had to be prized out of him like stone out of grounds. So how will you say? So I can say my friend is very calm person. He speaks very less, and words had to be prized out of him like stone out of ground. Very good, very good. So your friend is a calm, quiet person. If you have to make him uh, speak, it's like no uh, words have to be prized out. You have to pay him to this one. Like uh, there is no stand stone on the ground. You have to find a uh, stone, a, a ground which is some completely empty. Now next one. She felt like a tightening in her throat. When he was found guilty of telling lies, he felt a tightening in his throat. Okay, that's quite natural, and you are caught. That's right. Then, next one. He keeps his head on his shoulders. Can you use it uh, in a in a sentence? Suppose if if you give a give an advice to your friend uh, or, or younger people, younger brother. So, he is acting so, so what is it muscle oriented means action oriented. So, what will you tell him using this phrase? You should keep your you should keep your head on his sh your shoulders so that you put your mind into what you are doing. Very good, very good. Then next one weekly pilgrimage use it in a sentence. 
Cricket in India is like a religion. People go to watch cricket matches like a weekly pilgrimage. Very good, very good. That's good. So I don't know what going like a pilgrimage is good, but you have done it <laughs> well. Okay, next one. A, she saw him ghost past the lumbering defenders. Ghost past. Hmm. When Ravi is in the field, you can see ghost past the defenders and making his goal in hockey. Okay, hockey. Hockey is our national game. That's good. At least you you, you use hockey. Fine. All right. This is how uh, learners a writer uses uh, language metaphorically. This is called figurative use. Suppose you say that you are the uh, suppose uh, someone praises you are the queen of the world. So that's a kind of a figurative language. You are the uh, beckon light of. The world. We say that to Florence Nightingale. Yes, yes, sir. Then, then, then say it was uh, you know when when Gandhi uh, was assassinated, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, said, "Light has gone out of our lives." So this is how, you know it's a kind of figurative use to make an impact. So writers use it. Learners notice it when you become a writer or when you write something. Use them. Use such uh, figurative language to make it. Uh, make a story uh, to to attract the readers and also provoke them to think. That's what. Fine. All right. Uh, there are lots lot more usages uh, in the text. Learners, you read and try to use it in real life purposes. It's it's one thing is learning something, but using the same thing if for purposes. Language is learnt by using it for purposes. Fine. All right. The next thing we will do here is in this lesson, the writer is we call it postmodernist writer means contemporary writer. He attempts to bring in the contemporary problems and not confined to a conventional kind of writing okay, sir. or conventional aspects. In those days, uh, novels were written on rich people, king, celebrities, uh, big people, but novel was brought to kind of we call it sociological novel, yes, yes, social yes. life that that happened uh, from 19th century if you say the Victorian period even before uh, the common man uh, became the hero of the novel. So, and the language of the uh, short story novel also changed. Here look at it, the writer is employing a different kind of usage uh, to convey something. So, let us look at it, one of the uh, techniques the writer uses is ing form, we call it present participle, come, coming, kind of coming, linking, liking, going. So, let me read out from the book, uh, look at it, uh, Sophie says in the beginning of the story, when I leave, Sophie said, coming from school, I am going to have a boutique. Look at it, when I leave, Sophie said, coming from school, when I leave, she said coming from school. What does it mean? She said when she was coming from school. Yes. Sir. So, the writer has dropped was but only using coming from. Then look at it. Next, then John C. linking arms with her along the street looked doubtful. We can, how, how will you say um, um, Kriti? Yes, sir. It can be said in two sentences. John C. who was linking with her, uh, with her along the street looked doubtful. Ami was uh, sorry, John C was linking uh, arms with her along the street, she doubted, looked doubt, doubtful. So, same way, look at John C knowing they were both earmarked for, for the biscuit factory became melancholy. Look at that, John C knowing that they were earmarked for the biscuit factory means earmarked means you mark it and put oh when, when, when time comes you will be doing this job. Yes, yes. So, look at it, John C knowing they were both, John C was knowing, yeah. but the author says knowing. So, now there are so, 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 so much uh, kind such kind of usages. Now, learners we are not going to ask you to do some activity, uh, but notice it when you read that is what the book also says noticing form noticing form. So, you notice form, how do you learn grammar? First you say, oh suppose I say let me take the trivial grammar, he goes to school, I go to school, he goes to movie, I go to movie. Then immediately the uh, uh, young learner will note, oh when he only for he, he is adding yes or yes. So, this is what noticing, 
I have been living in this place. I said that I have been living in this place last 20 years, 10 years, 15 years. Oh, then the child notices have been is used for a long time activity which is continuing. Now, Kriti yes, and sir. the learners, please combine these sen two sentences into one by using ing form that is present participle. So, here are two sentences only for you. Ravi was thinking of his future. He told his friend, I will be a writer when I grow an adult. Hmm. Ravi was thinking of his future. He told his friend, I will be a writer when I grow an adult. Okay, change it now. Hmm. Thinking of his future, Ravi told his friend, I will be a writer when I grow an adult. Very good, very good. Now, the next one. So, let me read the sentence uh, again, uh, the two sentences. Srin was looking at her friend's work and asked her, how did you get all information for the essay? Hmm. Looking at her friend's work, Srin asked her, how did you get all information for the essay? Very good, very good. Well done, well done. Learners, let us learn to use the ing form that is present participle to put together two ideas and two sentences to make an impact on the reader. Suppose, say that he was lying on his uh, bed and reading a newspaper. Say, lying on his bed he was reading a newspaper. This is another uh, kind of putting together. So, we will not say reading uh, reading the newspaper lying uh, and, and he was lying on the bed. So, uh, one action you use present participle, the other action complete form. So, you can see that. So, why we do it? It, it also tells Kriti the, the action is moving. You must have noticed in cricket commentaries, if you uh, next time when you listen to it, uh, you, 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 you pay attention to, you to it, you pay attention to it and when, when the bowler or the, the field, uh, uh, fielders run fast, it, the, the, the commentators use present tense. When they are doing it uh, slowly, they use present continuous. Yes, so, yes. this is what that is. So, he is moving, that, uh, he runs fast, he runs fast, come on, he, is go, he catches it, something like that. So, uh, you must have uh, watched uh, many of them. Nowadays, people only watch, uh, do not listen to the commentary, but you should also listen to the commentary. Learners, uh, we have learnt to use some vocabulary, that usage, uh, uh, w w how the figurative language is used. Then, we also have noticed the form ing form present participle. So, you will be able to use it, uh, but you should use it then only you internalize it, make it permanent in you and you, it, that makes you good language user. Fine learners, we have come to the uh, close of this uh, lesson that is part 2. Uh, we will give you a piece of work to reflect on. One is list out your dreams. What are the your teenage dreams? Kriti, am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, definitely. lot of dreams. I want to become this. I want to become this. That is that is kind of uh, ambition goal. What you, what is your career ambition or life ambition? And then there is what now you want to do. Just write it. I am not saying that you want to do many things. My parents don't allow my teach. That not that. Whatever you want to do, just think about it and write. So we will meet you in part three of this lesson eight. Going places and uh, we will do writing there. Uh, please learners, we wish you that you go to places, you will be going to places and achieve great things in life. Uh, I thank you very much for having participated. Let me also thank Kriti. Thank you sir. Uh, and uh, we will meet you in part 3. Till then, bye bye, take care.